wondered would layered forces bind our reality together? An awe-inspiring, let's call it a theory, fuels our existence. When properly cultivated, it can be used to craft, construct, or even change the world itself. Left unchecked, like a wildfire, it'll destroy all around it without question. The theory I speak of, of course, is Arcanacraft. Sorcery for the uninitiated, magic for the uneducated, the concept of manipulating the truth. You convince the universe into believing whatever you're doing. You manipulate reality. We've protected this theory and molded the minds of those with the ability to wield it, our people. We stand here as your friends, family, and your peers. Our abilities are for the greater good without compromise. We do have a dream. One day, we'll be judged not by what we can do, but what we do with it. We stand here willing to fight for our identity, our skin, and our power. We are sorcerers, and we're here to stay. Episode 1. Concrete Roses. Paris, France. Thunder rolled across the night sky with force that'll quake the strongest man. Shala and Romelia Claymore, practically connected at the hips since they were both born, stood amid a grand castle that crumbled around them. It felt like if they stepped wrong and lively, they'd fall clear through the ground. Shala, bespectacled with long, lavender hair that swept in the middle of her back and braided on her left side, brandished a rapier as white as paper in front of her face. Oh, the prince has been kidnapped, she said in French, her voice presenting a dramatic flair as she did her best to look heroic. Romelia, with hair of sapphire, combed into dreadlocks, drew a katana and flung it into the air. Without warning, she jumped and caught it, posing next to her sister. Then we must save my husband, Romelia said dramatically. For we are magic knights of Hathigal. Everything falls to us. The skies twisted and converted, coloring itself into a putrid, stomach-churning green. The twins stood firm underneath a moon that shone an ominous light down. Around the castle, the ground crumbled away, and angry waves of water thrashed at the structured walls. The twins, at the top of the castle, saw ash flitter up and surround them. The ash sparkled a thick ring of fire that encircled the girls. To add sight to scorched air and wind, a deep rumbling approached the twins, thump, thump, thumping closer by the second with the cadence of a heartbeat. A reptilian face, the length of a boat's underside, lurched from the top of the castle, its long neck whipping it to and fro. It glared at the twins with sharp, emerald eyes. Shala exhaled. Romelia shivered and said, Just follow my lead. What about our plan? We need to be proactive. You plan on boring it into submission? The dragon vomited fire at the two, who yelped in fear and dove left, quickly evading its attack. The dragon's harsh heat scorched the air around the twins. They coughed and gasped for breath. We need to put it down before we are honey roasted. Shala snapped her fingers, and instantly, a grimoire with worn leather appeared in front of her, levitating above her grasp. Romelia touched the stone behind her. A spear-length scepter as blue as her dreadlocks emerged from the rock, glowing with ready light. After you, Romelia stated. Shala rose in an instant and gestured with her palm. A thick wall of white paper bonded together as the dragon unleashed a new volley of flame. The fire bowled into the paper, consuming most of it but keeping the twins safe. The dragon burped up another fireball, and Shala's incanted paper whipped around the energy like a storm of white feathers swallowing the fire. The dragon, seeing this, belched a plume of flame at the twins. Romelia spun out of the way, threw her katana past the dragon and clenched her palms together. The sword morphed itself, contorting and converting until it became a large barn owl with wide windspan. It swooped and dove towards the dragon, ramming its wide face into the beast's side like a cannonball. The dragon's eyes went wide in pain. Shala moved her arms quickly like a snake's strike, and her control of paper obliged, swirling around the dragon like an angry spear of wind. Romelia threw a couple of knives near the owl, and they converted into two owls, lesser in size, but larger than a human. In unison, the twins shouted, No! 
as a bolt of lightning crackled across the sky. The two owls slammed into the dragon on each side as more lightning bounced off the wave of paper, redirecting into the dragon's chest. The infernal beast howled in agony and thrashed about, but it craned its neck over the girl's rage burning in its eyes. Thing doesn't know when to quit, Remelia cried, as she held her scepter, repositioning the owls to continue their assault. Shala's book hovered in front of her, the pages shining like a magic treasure. We'd be done with this if you'd followed my plan. Romelia let loose a stream of fake tears and playfully rubbed her eyes. I'm sorry, sis, but magic knights are a lot more stylish than that. Not from what I've read, Shala rolled her eyes. The dragon made a grand leap at the twins, its shadow eclipsing them. Shala and Romelia flipped backwards onto a broken stone pillar as the dragon recovered, swept its tail, and knocked them down. Shala was first on her feet. She raised her hand, bent her middle and ring fingers inward, and encanted, Laissez les sol terra! The ground convulsed and cracked open, swallowing the dragon. Its infernal howl echoed off the castle's walls as it fell into infinite darkness, belching fire and futility. Romelia looked pleased at the spell's effect. I wish that was a spell we could use in real life, Romelia commented. It actually worked. It would have worked sooner if you weren't showing off, Shella snapped back. Romelia rolled her eyes. Um, we beat it, right? Remy, we need to be in sync, especially with what Tontin taught us. Our lives might depend on it. Romelia stifled a laugh. <laughs> You've been reading way too much. When was the last time any of us fought anybody? I'd rather have it and not need it than need it and not have it. Shala retorted. Romelia patted her sister on the shoulder. I think we'll be fine. Yeah, you say that now. Shala snapped her fingers and her grimoire flipped open to a blank page while a fountain pen materialized in her grip. And so, Shala spoke, her voice echoing like an epic fantasy film. It came to pass that we, the sisters of Claymore, did lay siege to the dread dragon Maling, for a moment, to rescue the dear love of fair warrior Emilia, it did seem that the dragon's power was greater than their enchantments could defeat. Batting nearly an eyelash as a foul beast struck. The sound of clapping interrupted Shala, and the twins looked around for the source. A dark-skinned woman, with short hair like strawberry, bled into view like a watercolor painting behind the twins. The twins whirled to see their aunt smiling. Tontina, they said together. Angelique, bearing the face of a 45-year-old, but the body of a 20-year-old, approached and took their hands. The twins, who stood a full eight inches over her, looked down at Angelique with anxious smiles. My goodness, is this what you do when I let you train alone? She spoke in French. Angelique, you scared us, Shala said nervously. We can't have privacy anywhere, Amelia lamented. Angelique looked around the setting, pleased, her smile never fading. You certainly come first since last month. The atelier spell to make full-blown fantasies? I honestly never thought of that. The twins looked at each other incredulously. You sure about that? Amelia asked. Angelique's brown cheeks blushed as she fought a girlish giggle. Well... We won't talk about that, but there were some guys long ago. She snapped her fingers, and the atelier spell cracked like glass and shattered. A veil tore itself from top to bottom as reality bled back into view. The twins and Angelique stood in the middle of the girls' bedroom, which was large enough to be its own loft apartment. Bookshelves adorned the walls around one side of the room. Amber light shone down from the ceiling from rag-covered lamps, sapphire blue curtains, and embroidered sheets across two king-sized beds. Shala and Romilia's clothes changed from fantasy attire to tunic-like dresses with knee-high boots. Trying on your birthday clothes already, I see, Angelique chuckled, examining them closely. The tailor did a damn good job. Please don't tell mom, Shala pleaded. I really don't want to hear her mouth tonight. She's already driving us crazy preparing for tonight. Shelley assumed a posh mannerism and spoke as such. Yell, grande, Tinith. In her natural voice, she continued. 
crossing over into womanhood. A big day for our sister. Celebrating a whole day early, Angelique sat on Romilia's bed, adorned with a sheet of embroidered raven, and missed the twilight sky. And you think you're ready for it? Well, it's going to come, Shala said ruefully. We got no other choice but to face it. Their aunt frowned. You make it sound like a death sentence. The twins shared a glance. Romilia propped herself on her scepter, while Shala folded paper with one hand into a dragon. It fluttered its wings into Angelique's hands. We just want more, Shala said. More magic? Shala nodded. Romilia opted to let her sister talk most of the time. They were mostly on the same page, and if the record wasn't straight, she'd set it right immediately in a blink. Yeah, Romilia started. I'm more well. We're f- more focused on refining our sorcery. I hear about so many new ways to approach magic, but how? How do we learn more? Mom's throwing a big party to show off as usual. Charlotte spoke up. But what's that got to do for our careers? You'd think the Sorcerer community in Paris would be more supportive, but they're just fat cats suckling at society's teats. We want something more stable to look forward to, not a party where a bunch of blue blood smirk at you. Angelique snickered at the image of fat cats getting fatter. <laughs> Shanna called the paper dragon back to her hand, and it belched a plume of shredded paper. Since you two are fretting so much about what has yet to come, show me something new right now. Show me you can go to the next level. Angelique locked her fingers and rested them in her lap. Romilia nodded and sighed. She tapped her scepter's blunt end on the hardwood floor, and a small gorgoyle appeared from the plume of dust. It flew upwards and hissed at them. Shella performed a sleight of hand. Rectangular slips of paper appeared between her fingers. In a blink, she flung them, and the gargoyle split in half, dissipating back to dust. C'est génial! Angelique exclaimed in a hushed voice. Shella pulled out a sheet of paper with runic writing, scribbled across it. She put it on the wall across the room, walked back to her bed, and huffed a few times. I got something I've been refining. Romilia smirked. Don't get a nosebleed this time. Shut up. Shala took a deep breath and hyperventilated. She snapped her fingers, and a booming, static noise rumbled the room. In an instant, Shala smacked the wall, face planting into a sheet of paper before she fell. Droplets of blood peppered the paper and the wall. What was that? A woman's voice called from another room. Nothing. I fell. Shala responded. Where? Off a cliff? Hurried footsteps approached the door. Sister, Angelique said, I'm talking to the girls. We're fine. Go back to the lampiery. The footsteps stopped, and an exasperated sigh was heard. The twins glanced at each other, and moments later, the footsteps departed. Yeah, she'd kill me if she caught me practicing this kind of spell. Shala groaned. She wiped her face clean of blood and pinched her nose's bridge. Still, some side effects, like a possible concussion. Cornelia chided. Shala picked herself up, counting in her mind, rubbing her gloved hands obsessively. Cornelia spotted this and approached her. Hey, Cornelia said lowly, "It's all right. We're right here." Shala hyperventilated until Romilia touched the underside of her hands. Shala snatched away without hesitation and looked around, then exhaled. Romilia smiled. Thanks, Lem. Shala squeaked. <laughs> What's a twin for? Romilia smiled. Angelique sat in silence, a solemn feeling descending upon her. The twins spotted her expression souring and called to her. You two got a lot of potential, Angelique deflected. Ever since I fixed my hands, I've done nothing but study. I swear I'll have that spell perfected in a month," Shala declared. Romilia laughed to decrease the feeling of tension she picked up. "And what about you?" Shala said in playful derision. "Tried riding your dragon again?" Romilia furrowed her brow and waved her middle finger at her sister's face. "Yeah, yeah. At least I don't bleed in each experiment. If you don't bleed from your arts, can you really call yourself a great sorcerer?" Angelique smiled. Either way, I'm still proud of you two. She hugged both, almost squeezing the air from their lungs. I still can't believe you girls are going to be eighteen. Angelique continued. Feels like yesterday I was teaching you to harness kimbo. 
Now you got your foot in the door of the world. Shala snorted. After tomorrow, Mom and Dad's going to jump down our throats about the path we're supposed to take. And we don't even know what kind of career we want. At least, I don't know. Hmm? What about the family business? Angelique suggested. We are never sure to need for another demon exorcist. Shala and Romilia looked at each other with pursed lips and wary eyes. We'll consider it, Shala answered. Yep, sure, Romilia added. Shala wrestled herself free from Angelique's hug, followed by Romilia. The twins caught their breath and fixed their frazzled hairs. I mean, we'd need to go to actual school for mastery exams, <laughs> Shala spoke up. Going to an actual school would be a nice change of pace. When you've been homeschooled, you get... Bored, Shala snorted. Yeah, extremely bored. No one new to meet, no experiences. Only other time we've really met someone in Sorsoi society is when we get our roses, Romelia said. Angelique looked at the twins' forearm. Shala's right and Romelia's left. Wrapped around their wrists and leading up their forearms were intricate thorn tattoos, and snaking up their biceps were roses. The right being lavender, and the left, sapphire. My two complete roses, Angelique endeared. I know a place where you can learn exactly what you need for a mastery exam. My alma mater. The twins sat on both sides of her, their faces glowing with intrigue. Well, don't stop now, Tontine, Romilia said. Shala added, What's it called? Proudly, Angelique answered, Skillful Academy. Shala and Romilia beam like children with the toy they've wanted for weeks, or a boy with a new game system right at the beginning of its lifespan. The twins heard of Scalefall. Everywhere in sorcery society had heard of Scalefall. If you really wanted to make your name known in the world of Arcana Craft, you'd graduate from Scalefall and finish the mastery exams. Any sorcerer worth their salt graduated with full mastery of Arcana Craft. And anybody who wants to take the path to greatness, the Academy won't steal them wrong. It's an institution that caters to talented wishes and warlocks. Your mom, dad, and I went there when we were little. The twins share a glance, one of confusion, then of piqued curiosity. Uh, Tontine, you're over 150. Shala began, catching her mouth to shove the words back in. Romelia bumped her sister's shoulder and snickered. Not that you look a day over 40. <laughs> We've been actually eyeing Skyfall for a while now. We got everything. Shala snapped her fingers and flitted through her grimoire, coming across notes on the academy. The professors there are all big names in society. Professor Elan Boone, most of all, Romelia commented, swooning over the name. She fancies him, Shala teased. Old Elan Boone. He was one of our schoolmates, head harder than concrete. If he's a professor there, then he's come a long way after all these years. It's inclusive for all walks of life, and not a single moment of her learning will be wasted there. Angelique held her nieces close as Shala jolted with passion. A thought settled into Romelia like a dreary cloud, turning her demeanor dim. What's mom and dad gonna say? She spoke up through a small cough. Shala snapped back to reality. The mention of their parents' reaction was sobering, indeed. Their mother and father had been adamant on making sure they were homeschooled and limited their interactions with the sorcery society growing up. If it wasn't for Shala's condition, things might have been different. There isn't a day that passes that Shala isn't reminded of that. Every step around the Claymore mansion feels like it needed verification from a parent or family member. The day Angelique agreed to oversee their training felt like liberation, in a sense. It was, for their parents were strict teachers. Scale forms a pipe dream. They don't want us going to America. I'm sorry for something so negative, but they'll just shut it down with all their might, Romelia continued. This is our future. You don't want to be stuck here. Plodding along until mom and dad decides our fate, do you? Shella brushed the underside of her hands, her eyes quivering. Romelia locked eyes with her twin, knowing that Shala needed her validation or else she may never speak again like this. You're right, Shal. 
We are claymores, aren't we? We seize the day, Shella announced proudly. But, you know, Mom and Dad, you know how they get. Angelique interjected. Let me talk to them first. You two just sit tight and relax your minds. It's your birthday to Mel. So get excited. The twins gave a dejected woohoo for their aunt. I'm sorry, Tantine, but I'm not in an excitable mood right now, Romilia sighed. Kiss me time, Angelique said as she stood and walked to their door. I'll come back with good news. The door shot behind their aunt, leaving the twins in a short silence. Shala heard a loud ding from her cloak. She withdrew a cell phone and checked it, immediately clicking it off. Her eyes danced quickly. She pushed her phone back into her cloak. Remelia, since her sister's distress, she stood and put her hand on Shala's shoulder, which made the latter jump. You good, Shal? I might have done something, something big, Shala said, turning to her. You must promise to go along with it. It'll change everything. Remelia could do nothing but stare. What could Shala have done that would make her anxious? It evaded Romilia's mind. Promise me, Rem, Shala said, grabbing her shoulders. Shala stretched a smile across her lips and winked. Romilia returned the smile and nodded. Now who's not in sync? Romilia chided. Shala did nothing but scoff and laugh. <laughs>